Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. We're going to be reviewing the Hobcart next on Now Let's Review. Okay, so we've driven its little cousin, the Hob Scout. Yes. And we like that a lot. If you want to check out that review, it's right over here. Um, this is the Hob Cart, and it's got a few big differences to it. Yes, so this is a cargo e-bike, and I would like to call this the SUV of e-bikes. Mm. And one of the major reasons for that is obviously this rear section here. Right now we've got the, the cargo basket on it, but it comes with uh, basically just this rack. You can buy this separately. We'll talk about the accessories a little bit later, but you can use this to strap things down. And the whole bike has a payload capacity of 450 pounds. And we're gonna get to the price a little bit later, but actually I was quite surprised and quite impressed with the price on this unit. All right, so Hobsco is a brand you might not be that familiar with. I wasn't until we started reviewing their bikes, but they've been around since 2019 and I'm actually really impressed with the quality of their bikes. And I really love to find new companies that actually impress me because there's so many companies out there, let's be honest, where you get the bike and you're like, meh, this one really, I don't know, everything we reviewed so far is really well built. I would say that a lot of stuff about this bike are in the Goldilocks zone mm -hmm. in terms of e-bikes. Uh, so the first and probably most important thing to me is uh, hidden right in this crankshaft here and that is the torque sensor. Yeah. Torque sensing e-bikes are by far the e-bikes that you should be aiming for. They're usually a little bit more on the expensive side, but they have been coming down in price. And this is a great example of coming down in price while also giving you a whole bunch of features. Now, paired with the torque sensing is a 750 watt hub motor. This one is made by Suto, which is a sub brand of Bafang, which you've probably heard of before. Yeah, it's a quality 750 watt brushless motor. It puts out a thousand peak watts, 750 nominal watts. So really plenty of power for a bike that needs it because it's a pretty heavy bike. It's a 66 pound bike. Also, you might notice it's a very long bike because they had to get all of this storage on the back. It's the wheels are spread out more. I'm just pointing that out for you because of a couple things. If you're gonna have to put this on a bike rack, you wanna make sure that your bike rack can take it. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get into more of the accessories, let's talk about the battery. This comes with a 720 watt hour uh, lithium ion battery made by LG, which is, so you're getting a nice battery made by a reputable company. This isn't like a who knows kind of battery. Cool part about this battery is it's got a light on it. Very bright light. Very bright light, and it will even do flashing. So um, yeah, if, if you break down, for instance, it would be nice to just set this out so people can see you at night. Yeah. A couple things I really like about the battery. So first of all, LG, it's a brand name battery. Mm -hmm. They put it integrated into the frame and they put it on the top side, which I like a lot. When it's down on the bottom, it means that you're gonna have to get down on your knees very often to get it in and out. Here, it's so easy to put in and out of the bike. And gravity just kind of assists you on the way in. The only thing I don't like, and this is pretty much every e-bike, is that you need the key to take the battery in and out. I don't think of keys when I think of biking, and so it's just one more thing I have to remember to bring with me, because if I don't bring it with me and I need to take the battery out at work or something to charge it, then I won't be able to. You also need the key to kind of put the battery back into it as well. Some bikes have more of like a clip style. This one, you have to turn the key to unlock, and then you have to turn the key to lock it. It's not the end of the world, it's just that you have to keep that in mind. It's pretty nice having a removable battery because that way you can park the bike outside, bring the battery inside, charge it up uh, where it's nice and, and proper temperature, you know, no rain or anything like that. Well, you know, the, the bike frame itself can get rained on as much as you want. The only downside though is when you do remove it, you're opening up this to water. True, but uh, the bike has been designed, I mean, there's a hole on the bottom to let all the water out. So right. it's not like you're gonna have to I'll flip the whole thing over and dump it out. Right. So it charges in four hours. And the other nice thing about having it integrated is that when you're on bike paths and things like that, people aren't gonna really first think of this as an e-bike because there's no obvious battery. Now the range on this bike with a 720 watt hour, 15 amp hour battery is they say 60 miles. I'm guessing that's with plenty of your own pedaling. I would guess more like 40 if you're doing heavy acceleration, heavy throttle. Yeah, the, the nice part though, and the reason that I think they're able to get this range is because of the torque sensing. A lot of e-bikes have cadence sensors, which just, they're going like, are you pedaling? If you're pedaling, I'm gonna throttle up to some certain speed. And you get a lot of ghost pedaling where your feet are moving, but they are not putting in any work to the drivetrain of the bike. With torque sensing, that almost never happens. The pedaling that you do is gonna be kind of multiplied by the motor. So you not only feel super strong, but you're also putting in some work which drastically increases the range. Yeah, it feels just so much more enjoyable to ride a torque sensing bike. And let's just get into 
like all of the positives. So first of all, you get a range increase. Second of all, you get a bit more of a workout and a workout that you can uh, decide how much of a workout you want to get. Obviously, you can shut off all assistance and try and pedal the bike yourself, but you can up it. There's five levels of pedal assist. Level one is already pretty good in terms of being able to go for a long distance without getting too sweaty or too tired. The other nice thing about torque sensing is that you can slow down. A lot of e-bikes, especially the cadence sensing ones, you set it to level one and it's going to try and get you up to say 10 miles an hour. Well, let's say that you're riding with some kids or some friends, or you don't want to go that fast. You're on a bike path where it's not really kosher to be going 10 miles an hour. With torque sensing, you can slow down to any speed you want. You can be going at a complete crawl and still have complete control. Whereas with normal e-bikes, you're going to have to either switch off pedal assist and try and pedal the bike yourself, or have to modulate that with the throttle. Now talking about top speed, it comes as a level two bike that gets you up to 20 miles an hour, but with the Hobsco app, you can unlock the class three part, which means you can go up to 28 miles an hour. A lot of people might go like, oh my God, 28 miles an hour, that's so scary and so dangerous. Then don't do it. Then don't do it. Most of the time, I honestly think you're probably gonna be cruising around 12 to 15 miles an hour on a bike like this, but it is really nice to have the capability to get up to 28 miles an hour. Now, in our testing, we found that the 28 miles an hour could really only be unlocked with the throttle. Right. That's okay, in my opinion, because I don't think you should be going long distances at 28 miles an hour. Right. You're not going to get the range numbers that they claim. And I think that the only time you're going to be using that top speed is on very busy roads where you need to go like a hundred feet or, you know, half a mile on some pretty scary busy road. And you want to keep up with traffic. Keeping up with traffic is in some ways safer than going at a slow speed where more cars are gonna be passing you, they're gonna be passing you at a higher rate of uh, speed relative to how fast you're going. And I wanna argue that getting through intersections on an e-bike to me is safer than on a regular bike. We watch so many regular bike riders take longer to get through an intersection because they're in high gear and they have to really go slow to start. Whereas we just go zip and we get through the intersection. And that's where the throttle for me is a huge nice thing to have. The throttle on this bike is up on the left. It's different than most than we've seen. It's right next to these really nice ergonomic uh, handlebars. And having it on the left is just something to think about. I like it better than having a half throttle on the right. Oh, absolutely. Because so often, especially unless you're really experienced, you will hit that half throttle unexpectedly when you're walking the bike or when you're you know sitting there. This is, you know that you're gonna intentionally wanna do it. I wanna talk about the frame for a second. It's a 6160 aluminum. And if you notice, there's no welds here that you can see. Obviously it is welded. There's a couple back here, but most of the weld points, they've taken a lot of trouble to make look nice. And so yes, down here, there's a few that you can see, but for the parts that you're really looking at, it's smooth and sleek, comes in two colors, orange and gray. And I just think they did a really good job with the design. I'm really impressed with the design. Yeah, the smoothness gives it this look of a very much more expensive bike than what it is. And again, we're gonna get into the price a little bit later. The accessories on the back, it's really nice how they go to black here. So it all fits in nicely with the two fenders and the fenders are really nice. They're attached at two different points, so they're not gonna rattle. And I really love fenders on a bike. It's one of those things you don't really think about until your first rainy day. And then you come home all covered with <laughs> grit and grime. And then you're like, oh, fenders would have been nice. So fenders are awesome. Even days where it isn't raining, but it rained the day before and you're gonna go through a couple puddles, having fenders is really nice. These are plastic fenders. So, you know, they're gonna hold up to a bit more abuse and not get bent or start scraping your wheel. It's got front suspension. So the front fork has 45 millimeters of travel. It's a hard tail, so there's no suspension in the back, which is kind of be expected since you've got cargo in the back. Yeah, you wouldn't want to like put a heavy box in the back and then the whole bike go like, oh, like some kind of station wagon. I think that having the suspension in the front is really smart. It's going to soak up some of the bumps, but it's going to leave this still as a cargo bike. Nice little touch on the front is that instead of just one side of the chain being protected, both sides are protected, much less likely that you're going to catch something in there. I just love that a lot. It's got four inch wide, 20 inch diameter uh, Chow Yang tires. And the tires are really nice and grippy. Like on the Hyper Scorpion, they've got a very smooth tire, which is quieter. But then when you 
hit any kind of um, gravel or whatever, it doesn't grip. These grip really well on gravel. And this is part of why I would call this the SUV of e-bikes. This has some off-road capability to it while also giving you some cargo capacity. And I think that this is very useful when it comes to cities or even suburbs. Sometimes you're gonna have to cut across a field. You're gonna have to cut across a, a gravel path or, or some kind of construction zone where the terrain is gonna be uneven. Having the suspension and the big, nice, fat, grippy tires is gonna see you safely through all of those terrains. You can do adjustments to the front suspension, which you probably should do when you get on it and it, you get your weight adjusted to the bike. They just kind of set it at the factory to a certain weight and then you should see how you like the ride. But let's talk about adjusted. The brakes are superbly good. Once you go hydraulic, just like with torque sensing, it's hard to go back and this has hydraulic brakes and they are tuned really, really well. They give a lot of good stopping power, which is something that you want, especially if you're gonna be riding this with your kids in the back. It's got a Shimano seven-speed shifter, which is nice to have. Although honestly, I usually find something pretty high up gear-wise and then I just leave it there. But again, if you're going up a hill or something, it can be nice to shift. If the battery were to ever die, it's gonna be nice to have those lower gears so that way you can kind of limp your way home pedaling at a much slower speed. But yeah, most of the time, I think you're gonna be in gear seven, pedal assist level one, and it's just a great feel to give you not only a whole bunch of torque, but a whole bunch of power too. I like this kind of kickstand on a bike that's gonna have packages because you don't want to have the standard kickstand where the whole bike leans and then the packages fall off. This is more of a moped style. You would think it would be hard to do, but really not. And it's, I think it was a smart choice for them to do. Yeah, it keeps the center of gravity lined up right over the center of the bike. Because again, if you had a side uh, kickstand, the whole bike would lean over. And if you had a big you know, birthday cake or something, <laughs> then the bike would want to tip. Over on the control pad, um, so you've got up and down for changing your pedal assist levels. You've also got a power button. And then I like that it has its own headlight button. I don't like bikes where they tried to save a button because when I'm riding, I'm not thinking like, oh, do I hit M, do I hit power? I don't really wanna hit power while I'm driving and hold it. So it, to me, it's just great that they have their own dedicated headlight button. It's got headlights and it's got an integrated rear light, which is really nice. So the bike is gonna to come to you packed up. They do free shipping in the 48 continuous states and it came really well packed. It took us about an hour to put it together. It's gonna to take a little bit longer if you have accessories. We're gonna talk about that in a second because those, a lot of, you know, this comes as a basket that only needs four screws, but there's another cool accessory that we wanna talk about, which does take a little bit more time to put together. And that would be the kid's caboose. And uh, it's a great name, I think, and uh, it's a great feature. So not only can you get a nice comfortable seat for the back and also some running boards for the kids to put their feet, but you can also put a little cage around that seat so you can keep the little ones with something to grab onto as you're kind of going over bumps or whatever you're doing on your fun little adventure, either to school or just out and about. Yeah, it's really nice. It makes you feel really safe and secure. Whereas a lot of times you just kind of throw a kid on the back here and then they're just like holding on for dear life. It's a nice accessory package. So let's talk about it. You probably want to get the kid caboose, which is $99. It does take a while to put together, but it's worth it. The seat, which is $69. And that's, you know, you don't need to get the kid caboose. I suppose you could just throw, you know, an older kid on the back. Mm -hmm. The $99 running board kit. So together that's 267 bucks. And you might say, well, that's a lot. But right now let's get into the price. The price of this bike without any sales is $19.99, which I was already surprised at. And then it tends to be on sale a lot for $18.99, which is like, oh, well, you're getting kind of a free accessory with that price. I'm blown away by that price. We've seen a lot of e-bikes that I would say are far lesser than this mm -hmm. for more than that price. You're getting torque sensing, an excellent range, front suspension, fat tire, rear rack with capability for all sorts of accessories. I'm very, 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 very impressed with that price. Uh, again, I think that this is such a wonderful thing with e-mobility that we're able to get a bike that's this good for that price. And if you're wondering, can I fit on this bike? Well, the seat's minimum height is at 35 inches, so that's a pretty small rider. They claim you can be four foot 11 to six foot three. I think you could actually be taller and fit on this bike. But so that's quite a range of people could fit on this bike, because you might be like, well, it's quite a bike for a small person. It is in terms of lifting, but in terms of riding, it doesn't feel that big. Another thing to keep in mind is that from the factory, the seat can go just this low. One thing you can do is bring a bike like this to a bike shop and they'll be able to cut the bottom of your seat post off, allowing the seat to come even lower if you really wanted to. Yeah, or you can do it yourself if you have a hacksaw. Exactly. And I love, again, when they allow you to adjust the seat height on the go, you don't need tools to do it. 
Oh, and lastly, uh, there is this nice huge rear rack, which is $99. It's a really nice accessory as well. There's also this front basket for $89. I would say this is probably the my least favorite accessory of the whole thing. It took a, a long time to kind of put on. It was, it was harder to get on than basically everything else here. It doesn't hold as much. I would say that if you're gonna do like groceries with the kids, that makes total sense to get the front basket. Another kind of odd thing is it's not connected to the handlebars. So you're gonna have to kind of get used to this this basket that doesn't turn when you turn, it can freak some people out. But it's nice because in the old days when it turned with you, then all that weight in the front basket would pull you left or right. This way, you're still got the center of gravity in the middle. It's an excellent point. All right, so overall, if we go pros and cons, I really don't have too many cons here. I just really like this bike. The only downside is that it's big, but that's what it's meant to be. It's like an SUV, right? It's yep. bigger. If you can live with the size, like if you don't live in a tiny apartment in New York and that you'd have trouble getting this into, then I think I would highly recommend it. The price is great. The quality is great. The, the range is great. I love it. I think more than almost any other e-bike that we've tested, this is the closest to coming to replacing a car. Yeah. Because, you know, I think that a lot of people People kind of equate a, a normal e-bike with, you know, like a sedan. But a sedan actually gives you a whole lot of features that a, a bike typically doesn't. And I feel like this kind of gets you up to that level. And that's why, I, again, I call this the SUV of bikes, because you've got storage capacity. You've got off-road capability. You've got the capability for passengers. It's a really new way to think about biking that isn't as, I don't know, Dutch. Um, having the ability to have a nice battery that's uh, with a powerful motor and great torque sensing, it just makes for a wonderful experience on this bike. Yeah, and when you are riding around town, you don't have to feel like it's such a cargo bike that you're gonna look weird. If you don't have cargo on it that day, it still looks like a bike, which yeah. is kind of a nice feeling because you've seen some of those Dutch cargo bikes where it's like, it takes up a big square meter of space. This doesn't. I just really love it as an all-around bike that can also be used, like you said, for anything you want to throw at it. Well, we hope that this review of the Havsco Havkart was helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you have any other e-bikes or cargo e-bikes, especially that you're interested in, please leave them also in the comments below because we would love to hear about them and review them for you. Don't forget to leave a like down below. We'll see you guys next time on Now Let's Review.